All righty. Hello, hello, everyone. As you join us for our session this evening, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be here. We're going to let everyone load in and relax while they're here. Um, and we'll get started in just a couple of moments. We're doing a Blue Devil student chat this evening, so you'll get to hear from real life students about real life things on campus. Um, and in a moment, I'll introduce myself and give our panelists an opportunity to introduce themselves as well. Um, but we're super excited to have you all here today. If you could give us a raise hand function. Um, we love seeing engagement from the, from the other side. The old Zoom platform used to show it as like a wave of hands that would come up, uh, but they do show up on our screen as like people raising their hands. So thank you, thank you. Um, we cannot be more excited to host this this evening. This is a um, student run. Um, opportunity here. So you'll get to hear from students. I'll be moderating. I'm a senior here at Duke. Um, we'll get more acquainted here soon. But if you could go into the chat and actually let us know where you're zooming in from, we would love to see where everyone's coming in from today. All right, let's see. Colorado, Tennessee, New York. Awesome. Florida. See, I love when all the names are rolling in. There's so many people here this evening. But it seems like we have people from all over, and especially if you're an international student, thank you for taking the time to join us. I know it may be, I've had students who've been on at like three in the morning, four in the morning, 12 at night, right? Like crazy, but thank you so much for being here. All righty. And we'll give it just a couple more moments for people to go ahead and come in. Um, like I said, sit back, relax your shoulders, unclench your jaw hang out, right? So no stress event. We're so excited to be able to answer questions about what it's like to be a student here on campus. You know, you can read so much about what's going on in a university, but it's very special to be able to hear from students who go here currently, right? It's super, super cool. Yeah, let's see. People from all over too. I think I had two people, someone said they were from Nigeria and another person said they're from India. So thanks for joining us from all the way over there. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Okay, I don't see too many more people joining in for this evening. Um, I'm sure as people trickle in, they'll hear us get started, but let's go ahead and officially begin. I'll start off with a quick introduction about who I am and my role that I play here on this call this evening. My name is Devin. I'm a senior from Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm double majoring in biology and public policy with a certificate in science and society. And around campus, I help run our tour guide program. I'm an intern for our undergraduate admissions office, and I do epigenetic research and plant ecology research here at the Donahue Lab in our biology department. This evening, I'm going to be your moderator for this event. So I'm an intern at the undergraduate admissions office. So this provides me the opportunity to be able to sit back and you know, kind of interview our other students that we have here this evening about their time here at Duke, their experiences, and getting your questions answered. Um, and an important aspect of that too, I wanna to go over a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. Towards the bottom of your screen, you should be able to see a Q&A function, right? And that Q&A function is gonna be crucial for this evening. Um, in the background, we have two amazing admissions officers here. We're fielding questions that are gonna be able to um, be asked directly to our panelists. So please, please, please. Looks like I have around 211 attendees here ask us questions in the Q&A, please. We'd love to hear those. That way we can get the voices of our students coming through to answer the, some important questions that you all have. Another note from our admissions office this evening is that Duke encourages persons with disabilities um, to participate in its programs and activities. So if you would like to request accommodation services for an information session, please contact Adela Hackett at adela.hackett at duke.edu or 919-684-0186 to arrange these for a later date. And on our next slide here, just want to reiterate that the recording of any undergraduate admission session is prohibited and the university owns the copyright to informational materials prepared by the undergraduate admissions office. And again, a brief overview of our session today. This is the Blue Devil student chat. You all will be asking questions in our Q&A and our student panelists here who will meet in just a moment will be answering them throughout. At the end, we'll be sure to share our Why Duke stories and we should be wrapping up this evening at around 8 p.m. So just an overview of what we have. And then our last slide here, I really wanna emphasize the opportunity to connect more with the office and with Duke at large, right? So that those handles there at Discover Duke, as well as visiting the admissions office website, admissions.duke.edu. Also recorded sessions are available online and on demand for you all in case you have any, um, it's learning a little bit more about Duke, 
hearing from students, that kind of thing. So those are those QR codes there. All righty, so we're going to stop sharing our PowerPoint here and get a chance to actually meet who's on our call this evening. So I'm going to throw it over to our panelists for them to introduce themselves this evening. And we'll hear from them. Let's kick it off with Kira. Hi, guys. I'm Kira. I use she, her pronouns. And I am a senior at Duke from London. Long Island, New York. I study on the pre-med track, but I actually made an interdepartmental major, which means I took kind of two different departments and I study between both of them. So mine is called Social Determinants of Health and Inequality, and it's a mix of sociology and cultural anthropology. So if anyone has questions about making their own major, I would love to share. I also am an intern at the Student Wellness Center on campus, and I'm a mystery diner for the dining hall. I do little food reviews of all of our different dining places, which is so much fun. And I'm also part of a club that does fashion design for people with disabilities, and we host like a big fashion show every year, which is super cool. Hi everyone, my name is Lucy. I use she, her pronouns. I am a sophomore at Duke, for, originally from Maryland, kind of by Annapolis. And I am studying computer science with a minor in psychology. Um, and I'm involved with a lot of tech organizations on Duke, especially with underrepresented groups. Um, and so I'm in women in tech, D-tech, and I'm the co-director for Ben's Hacks, which is a hackathon that Duke hosts for um, ninth through 12th graders in the Raleigh-Durham area. Um, and in addition to that, I am a comp sci TA for one of the introductory courses at Duke, which is so much fun. Um, and I am a student assistant at the Office of Special Events. And so that's a really cool job where I get to see like all the events that are held for like faculty um, or all the special guests that are invited to football games. Um, so that's really cool. And then I'm also a volunteer at the Duke Puppy Kindergarten. And so all of last year, I went to the kindergarten and I spent time with the puppies. Um, but this semester, I have the amazing opportunity to have one of the puppies in my dorm a couple of nights a week. And so that's been a lot of fun as well and a great way to de-stress from my, my comp sci classes. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kelly, I use she, her pronouns. I'm a sophomore from Orlando, Florida, um, studying psychology, um, and I'm involved with um, Quad Council, so that's kind of like student leadership for residential life, um, and then I also did focus my freshman year, um, and I'm also involved with the Duke stand-up troupe, um, and yeah, that's about it. Alrighty, so we've gotten a chance to meet our incredible panelists this evening. I do want to make a quick reminder here as well that when you want to ask questions to be answered by a panelist, be sure to put them in the Q&A function and not the chat. Please, the Q&A function and not the chat. Okay, let's kick this off actually with a really fun question that I love. And um, I'll send this one over to Lucy. So you were mentioning that you have, you've had an opportunity through the puppy kindergarten to bring some your dogs into your room, right, to de-stress from your classes. What are some other ways that you de-stress as a student here? What kind of resources does Duke have for, um, you know, students to have fun and, and do things that are, are not, not super stressful? Yeah, of course. So obviously one is a puppy kindergarten um, and that's open to everyone, not just volunteers. Um, so every, every day of the week, Monday through Friday, there's an hour for students to come visit the puppies, um, which is a lot of fun for everyone. Um, and another, obviously Duke has a lot of sports teams um, that are really good and division one sports. And so um, students love to go, you know, watch sports, basketball this year, football is really exciting for everyone. Um, we're having a good run there. Um, and not only are there division one sports, uh, but there's intramural sports and club sports. So if you like playing sports, um, you can play either competitively or just fun with your friends. Um, I like to do a lot of stuff in Durham for fun with my friends, like on the weekends. Um, there's farm. There's a farmer's market every Saturday morning, which is a lot of fun, um, and a lot of local restaurants. Um, and so, yeah, I just like being able to like, hang out with my friends. There's a lot of different clubs at Duke as well that are not just academic, but also just like social, and you can hang out with people um, that have similar interests as you, whether that's academic or, you know, like playing board games or switch games or whatever you like to do. 
Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. There's a lot to do in Durham and a lot to do in, on campus. All right, so my next question, I'm going to throw over to Kelly. So Kelly, could you talk to us a little bit more about the first year experience? What makes Duke different? What makes that first time here on, on our college campus so special in your opinion? Yeah, so I think that Duke is just really unique in that all freshmen live on a separate campus. So um, one thing I found just kind of like fun about that and unique about that is that like anytime I was just like walking anywhere, like if I had a class on East Campus or if I was going to like get lunch or dinner or breakfast on East Campus, I always saw friends from my class um, and just like from my grade or from my dorm. And so it just like builds a very strong sense of community as a freshman class. Um, and I think that even just like carries over onto West Campus now being a sophomore, like I still see those familiar faces, but I think like just living all in the same place um, and like having that kind of close knit community um, was really helpful just like in terms of making new friends and like kind of it eased that transition from high school, I think a little bit. Um, and yeah, there's also a lot of unique opportunities for freshmen as well. Um, I did mention that I was part of the FOCUS program, um, which is where you live with the same people that you have two of your classes with um, first semester. And um, I did the American Experiences FOCUS and it just is like great professors, um, really engaging and um, you get dinner with your professor and um, all the students in your FOCUS once a week. So it's just like a great, bonding experience as well and since you do live in the same building as those people again another great way to kind of like make friends right off the bat and have that community right off the bat um, which I found was just like so helpful in kind of easing my fears about you know how easy will it be to make friends freshman year amazing thank you so much um, and another question I wanted to turn over to Kira um, and this is a great question for a senior. So what's your favorite part about student life at Duke or the community outside of education? So the culture of campus. Yeah, so I think one of my favorite parts about the culture on Duke's campus, and I know you said outside of the classroom, but my answer is going to be that it bridges from the classroom into your like friend groups, because at least in high school, I witnessed more of a separation where once we left class, like we didn't talk about class and we just never brought that academic side like into our social lives. But I think it's really a great experience to have when you're going to class with friends and you're making friends in your classes. And then when you get out of class, like my friends and I will talk about interesting things we learned in class and we're all like invested in each other's like personal lives but also their academic success in a very community building way where it's like we're going to lift each other up and more generally um i think that the duke student body are just really interesting people who are all interested in you as well because duke gives you so many opportunities opportunities to follow your passions and do really cool things that all students have something they're really passionate about and are taking it to like really interesting extents and it's really lovely to like hear that and hear stories from other students but also that you're going to be doing those things too like you'll come to duke and explore things and find passions and want to talk about them with your friends and it's really nice that it all happens in the same population like they're the same people that you're like having fun with and playing board games with in the common room that you can really sit down and be like all right let's like finish our papers like hype each other up to do those academic things and i think the balance of it and the blend is really what makes duke special yes that balance is crucial i want to second that um let's turn it back over to lucy for a question related to the academic environment here um, would you describe Duke and the environment here for students in the academic sense to be competitive, collaborative? Can you talk about your experience? I know you're also a comp sci major too, so I'm, I'm sure you have some insight. Yeah, um, so I would definitely say that Duke is collaborative, especially compared to what I've heard at other universities. Um, I think in every single one of my, not every one of my classes, but most of my classes, we've done some sort of, you know, group project or, you know, even in my like my hardest comp sci classes, we can, you know, work with a partner on our problem set. So, you know, like get in that environment where you can like work together and like kind of work through problems together. Um, and not just in classes when it's required, but outside of that, I think that Duke students are really willing to 
help each other. And, um, you know, if you see someone that's like struggling in a class and you're taking that class, I feel like most Duke students are are willing to help out. Um, and I know like me specifically, um, like I'm in a couple of tech organizations and I know like people all the time are like, who's in this class? Like, do you guys know anything about like this project or this topic that I'm like struggling with? And there's always people that are like willing to help out, um, especially in a major that's so big, it's like comp sci. Um, you know, there's always people that um, know what's going on and are able to, to help you. Um, and even outside of that, there's more like structured groups, such as things like SAGE um, that the Academic Resource Center does, where you can you can go and you can work in a collaborative group with others that um, in, on a topic that you might be struggling with. And so you can kind of learn those skills outside of the classroom in a more like collaborative group as well. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say that it is more collaborative. Duke students are really willing to help. Um, and there's also ways for you to get like more of like a structured group as well if that's what you're looking for also. Thank you so much for sharing. And so on the same vein of talking about classes and academics, <laughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. Let's do a round robin and ask everyone here what their favorite class or most interesting class they've taken at Duke was. Let's kick it off with Kelly and then go Kira and Lucy. Okay, so freshman first semester, I took um, Psych 101. Um, I am a psych major, so like it was kind of a requirement, but a lot of people also take it um, just because like they've heard it's a great class and it really is like the lectures from the professor are so amazing. Like everyone says they're like TED Talks, like they're very engaging, like you never get bored in that class. And the subject too is just like so interesting and you can just like apply it to your life. So I feel like it's one of those classes where like you can feel that it's like a real world application without being like, why am I doing this? Um, but it's like, it's just really engaging. And like I said, the professor's amazing and it's a big class too. So you're bound to have friends in that class as well. So um, yeah, I really love that class. All right, so my favorite class, I love talking about this class because it was such a fun experience. It was my freshman seminar. So all freshmen have to take a seminar class, but they have seminars in like every department, so many different topics. So you can find one that's really interesting to you. So I was taking my seminar in the spring. Of course, I did my research asking everyone I knew who was taking a seminar in the fall, like the big two questions, like, is it interesting? Is it fun? And is it easy? So I did all this research, you know, checked my sources and I figured out that physical education seminars seemed to be the winner. They were a lot of fun. And the big plus was that it seemed to be where the basketball players were and coming to do like bucket list item have a class with a basketball player. Like, I don't know, their world seems so foreign to me. It's just so interesting. So I went on to registration before anyone could register, like was just checking out the classes. And I noticed that this freshman seminar was like almost full. So I put my little Duke like thinking cap on and figured out that they must be athletes because they have priority registration. So I got myself in that class, checked off the bucket list to take class with basketball players. It was a nutrition seminar, which was very personalized to us because like there's no way you could tell me like my little five foot self and then like the seven foot tall basketball player that we should be like eating the same things nutrition wise. So it was very much reflective on our own like needs and what we should be eating. So that was fascinating to me to learn about nutrition in that way. I had never thought about that. Um, and it was just such a fun class. The professor was so engaging. We had like a field trip to Duke campus farm. It was just a lot of fun. So that was definitely my favorite class. Yeah, I think actually my favorite class at Duke is one that I'm taking right now. Um, and it's called Markets and Management um, 197 or Organizational Leadership. Um, and I think I'm really passionate about the topic. So that definitely helps. Um, but it is a kind of an inconvenient time. So but I find it really engaging anyway. And so that's how I know it's kind of my favorite class um, because it's like a nighttime class. You know, some people, you know, might dread going to it, but I always look forward to it. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's two and a half hours. So we have a lot of time together um, and we get a lot done. It's like super engaging. Um, we learn about all different kinds of leadership and like things that you wouldn't necessarily, but 
once you like hear it, you're like, oh yeah, like that makes a lot of sense. Like why wouldn't people do that? And so it's just like, it's really engaging and it's also really applicable to my life now. And also like when I get out of the person. Thanks, Lucy. And I'll take a moment to share my favorite class as well. <clears throat> right now, I'm actually in a public policy graduate course that is related to national security decision making. So an ex, like, <laughs> it's insane. So my professor is an ex-Marine. Um, he has the most amazing, incredible, wild stories you've ever heard. And there's only four other undergraduates in my course. So everyone else in my class is actually part of a fellowship program that looks at like national security, intelligence, that kind of thing. And they're also midway through their career. So like my class is full of FBI agents, people who work at the State Department, um, current active duty military, um, who are on to like a next assignment after this. It is the most, it is the coolest thing ever hearing them talk about their experiences and also getting to have real world perspectives inside of our class has been incredible. So that has been my favorite course of my time here at Duke. It's was, It's been incredible to be in the class. Um, but we'll take a moment to turn it back over to Kira. I know that you're pre-med, and could you talk a little bit more about some of the resources that Duke has here for pre-med students and other um, pre-professional majors as well? Although we don't have like official pre-professional majors like for your certificate or pre-graduation. So if you could explain a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. So there's a lot of advising um, for all pre-professional tracks, specifically for pre-med, you have, well, actually all of them, you have a pre-professional advisor who is specific to that track. So you'll get a pre-business, a pre-law, a pre-med advisor who knows everything about that process and what it means to be pre-med and like the different things you're going to have to be considering. So they are a absolutely great outlet and a great resource because it is like literally their job to help you navigate this world. There are also like, there's a listserv, which is like an email chain that goes out once a week. And it's like the pre-health newsletter. There's a pre-business newsletter, a pre-law newsletter, and it lists all different, like whether they're webinars and talks you might be interested in or different resources that are being created or different deadlines, like when the MCAT deadlines come around, like when you should sign up for the MCAT, they send those out. So those are a really great way, like it comes straight to your inbox once a week, everything important that you need to know. So that's awesome. I would also say that a lot of the advising on pre-professional tracks and really in general comes from upperclassmen. And that sometimes can be really valuable information just in terms of like, you should take Chem 101 in the fall, not the spring, or like this professor teaches it this way and this professor teaches it this way. And different things like that are always really helpful and upperclassmen love passing that knowledge down to underclassmen. So there's also a lot of like, informal community kind of advice. And the last thing I'll mention, we have a lot of pre-professional like organizations and clubs, which are a great way to meet other people who are studying the same things. And then you can like study with them, talk about like internships, stuff like that. And they also have their own like advising networks, like the seniors in the club will help the freshmen in the club. And sometimes there'll be resources, like I'm in some pre-med, pre-health, clubs and there are resources like a huge excel sheet of everything everyone has done over the summer and a little bit about their experience and whether they would recommend it and like where you can apply so something like that is always super helpful and student-led but there are a lot of like more official university like advisors and resources too so you're kind of like inundated with all of this information that you can use and help yes thanks so much for sharing Kira. So I want to turn this next question over to Kelly. <clears throat> and this is the first time I've kind of heard this question phrased this way. So really cool here. So Kelly, would you say that um, Duke is a place where you can feel safe enough to not care about like failing courses while exploring new interests or trying new things out? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I feel like also part of that is kind of what um, Lucy was talking about, where it's a very collaborative environment and not so much competitive. So it doesn't really feel like there's all this pressure to like, you know, be as great as the person sitting next to you or, you know, however you want to phrase that. Um, I do think like there are 
Duke definitely encourages you to like go outside of your comfort zone, especially freshman year. Um, and especially given that we don't declare our major, you don't have to declare your major until the end of sophomore year. Um, so it really gives you a lot of wiggle room in terms of like exploring. And um, I just think like there's definitely an emphasis on like, you know, try new things and it's okay. You know, if it doesn't go as you've hoped, like there's resources to help you with that. You know, there's resources if things aren't going well, like in terms of like the academic um, resource center, um, like tutoring and like Lucy mentioned, the SAGE groups where you can really collaborate with other people as well. Um, so yeah, I don't think that I've ever necessarily felt like, oh, like I'm afraid to fail because like this class is really hard or like, you know, this is something I'm not used to. Um, I think there are so many resources to kind of like get you through that sort of thing. Um, and I think Duke definitely, like I said, encourages you to explore freshman year, especially. Totally, totally agree there. Okay, so Lucy, our next question here <clears throat> is in relation to the accessibility of research for undergraduates on, on campus, how accessible is research? What kind of ex like things can students experience here? Maybe highlight the kinds of labs that we have as well. But yeah. Yeah, um, so... At Duke, you can really get involved in research and whatever you're interested in. Um, and so there's two kind of different platforms that we have. One is called Muser, um, where a bunch of different departments like post their projects um, and you, got, you can apply to them even starting as a freshman. Um, and then there's also, the, it used to be Duke List. It switched over to a different platform. I think it's like Duke Job, Duke X3 Jobs or something like that. Um, but you can look at like faculty postings um, where you can, but for research or other interactions like that, kind of with faculty um, that they're looking for. And so I did kind of like a, a non-typical kind of research position um, with a professor at Fuqua. Um, and I did it on market, market research on like new innovative businesses. Um, and so it's not like what you would think of typically as like research. It's, you know, you're not like looking at like biology or any of the things that you might like typically think of when you're thinking of research. Um, and so it was really cool. It was a great experience, um, especially to learn from someone who teaches at Pupa. Um, it was really cool. Um, and I learned a lot from that. Uh, and I did that as a, a second semester freshman. Um, so it's definitely accessible to everyone at Duke. Great. And let's see here. So um, Kira, this is a good one for you. How often do students leave campus and what type of activities would, do they do when they leave campus? Okay, was this question for me? Because you just cut out and I feel like I heard my name and then I couldn't hear yes, the question. <laughs> it is for you. Awesome. Was it about students leaving campus and what do they do? I I yeah, yeah. I can also repeat it really sure. quick. Yeah, it's like, what, what do students do off campus? What are things to do in Durham? That kind of thing. Sure. So one thing that's very much in the forefront of my mind, because it was just parents weekend and everyone knows when parents come, that is like, food time, like you are going out to eat and like going to all the restaurants you've been waiting to try. Durham is such a foodie city. Like every restaurant I've been to here has been so good. The food is amazing. So definitely eat. Students go off campus to eat big time. Um, there's also like farmer's markets. Durham even has a black farmer's market to support black owned businesses, which is really lovely. There's craft fairs in Durham. There's the Durham Bulls, which is the professional baseball game in Durham. They have like a big baseball stadium, super close to campus, actually, like short little drive. Those games are so much fun. I've loved going to the games with my friends. It's a lot of fun to just like cheer for a sports team. Um, DPAC is a big one. That's the Durham Performing Arts Center. They actually have Dear Evan Hansen coming. Like that's their play for the beginning of November, which is super exciting because I'm a big Dear Evan Hansen fan. And those, that's just like a little taste of things happening in Durham because clearly it's a very like boffin place to be. There are so many things that students love doing off campus um, and it's really a great place to go to school. Awesome. I'm going to pick up a quick question here because it's related to my exact major and certificate like plan. So someone out in the audience had asked, how feasible is it to double major and pursue a certificate? And I'm doing a biology a major along with public policy with a certificate in science and society. And I could talk a little bit about what my schedule was like. 
Um, it's really funny because it's it's very interesting when everyone asks like, what's what's the work life balance? What's the study balance look like? That kind of thing. Um, it honestly varies. And so what I mean by that is that even as a double major, um, the largest number of classes I may have on a given day is three. Um, and so typically courses are scheduled around, you know, you'll have two to three classes each day, each of which are maybe an hour to an hour and a half long. Sometimes some courses are, are longer, like Lucy and I are both in uh, two and a half hour courses, but those only happen one time a week, for example, too. And so what you find typically in college is that you really have a lot more free time than you have probably have ever had in the past, specifically in high school too, right? It's not going to be like seven to three every day, you know, practice after all of that stuff. It's very different. And one thing I also particularly like to mention about this topic is that when you're majoring and you're doing all this stuff on campus, right, and you're doing the things you're interested in, um, college is really this phenomenal time for doing things that impress you not things that impress other people. Because I think that's a very big shift that comes from high school to college, right? You do a lot of things in high school, some things you feel like maybe I have to do, or maybe there's things that I, you know, other people want me to do. But in college, and what's nice about having agency over your time is that you are doing things that impress you now. You are involved in clubs that you love and things that you like to do. Um, and so that's my little soapbox about like time management classes and stuff. But I do think it is so, so feasible um, to pursue multiple majors here on campus. Um, I think, honestly, the times when it make it a little stretch to figure out the schedule is if both majors are really different. And I had a, a, a humanities and a STEM major, and I still found it hasn't been too, too hard. Um, but yeah, it just takes planning and it takes time management. That's like the number one thing you'll hear from anyone. Um, you can make anything happen at the school as long as you have like the commitment, time planning or time management and planning to, to be able to make it happen. And I, Kira can definitely speak towards that as well. Your program too, right? Or yeah, your program too. So program two is like building your own major where you go and meet with someone um, to figure out how a, a series of courses will fit into the major you propose. Um, now let's turn this over to our first year students here. So both of you, we would love to hear a response. Let's kick it off with Lucy, then go to Kelly. Um, what is something first year students who are coming to college for the first time, what's something they need to know, what's something they absolutely have to know, or something you wish you knew? I don't know. So I was coming into Duke and I didn't know anybody when I first got to Duke. Um, and so it was a little scary, but I think Duke does a really good job of doing a bunch of different programs so that freshmen get to meet other freshmen, especially when you first get here. Um, and, you know, whether that's only or they have the new pre-orientation programs, which are super great. And I, I think they're great for, for meeting a community as well. Um, and so I think you should just know that, like, it's okay if you don't know anybody and it might be a little intimidating at first, but you definitely will meet people that are, like, have similar interests as you, that you find interesting, that, you know, you can make great relationships with. I think Duke is a place that has amazing people. Um, and once you find your people, you'll you'll see that as well. Yeah, um, kind of what Lucy said, like, um, I think that the pre-orientation programs that Duke has introduced newly last year um, are definitely a great way to just kind of like get comfortable with Duke and meet people with similar interests before your classes even start and like before things get a little hectic, um, which I think is like amazing. And that I did a pre-orientation program um, when it used to be kind of like separate from the O-Week events. And that was a way that I like, I was so grateful to have met people before we got into all like the um, orientation events and stuff. Like I thought it was really great to kind of have people that I knew. Um, and then also kind of like I said earlier, like just the fact that you live on a freshman campus makes it so much easier because like it's not so overwhelming where you might meet people and you're like oh are they in the same boat as me or like are they a senior like I feel like it definitely helps to kind of know that everyone around you is kind of going through the same thing and that's kind of comforting um and yeah I feel like I also met a lot of people in my classes which made that transition easier like people are very friendly in classes and no one is going to look down on you if you like have a question and you ask the person sitting next to you like everyone is just like very friendly I found in general and like I met one of my great friends just like randomly on the bus we started chatting to each other and like now we're great friends um and so I think that whether you're you know super extroverted or not either way you're going to find those people and kind of like find your circle and it definitely happens like if if you're worried about it 
just kind of know that like it'll happen and you'll be okay. Um, and if you're not, there are resources for that as well. Yeah, and I just wanted to add again real quick, sorry. Um, I feel like the freshman dorms specifically are like very centered around community. Um, like I know a lot of the freshmen, my freshman dorm at least, like when you came in the door, you like you had to walk by the common room. And so every time people came in and like the common room just became like this like hot spot for people to hang out, whether you knew people in there or you didn't, people would just go in there and hang out. And I feel like a lot of the freshman dorms are like that. And so it's just a great way to make a community um, with the people that you live with. Great, thank you both so much for sharing. I mean, perfect segue from Kelly as well to, over to Kira. Kira does a lot with our orientation week. Um, could you talk to us about what that looks like? What's the new model that students can expect here um, as they begin their college experience at Duke? Of course I can. I love talking about a week. It's one of my favorite topics because it was so much fun. So Duke just redid, revamped the whole orientation week experience. So now every freshman coming into Duke will go through a six day experiential orientation group. Um, so there are 18 of these different options for these six day, like essentially summer camp vibes before you get to school. And so the topics of these 18 programs range from like, there's one called P Research, which is all about research. And they do a lot of like visits to labs. And if you're someone who's interested in research, that's a great way Like before even the first day of classes, you can be involved in kind of research at Duke. There are also some for like media studies and arts. If you're a very artistic, creative person, if you love to be active and get out there, there's one called Project Play, which is all about sports and physical activity. So basically, whatever you're interested in, you should find one of those 18 that you're super stoked to participate in. And over the summer, before you get to Duke, you'll read descriptions of each 18 programs, and you'll rank them from 1 to 18 in like preference order of what you would like to be in as well as taking a little like BuzzFeed style quiz about what is important to you, what you like doing. And then through those two, like your rankings and answers to some questions about what you're like, what's important to you, what you want your college experience to be like, plus the survey, the admissions officers place everyone in the orientation group that they think is best. So over 95% of students get their first one of their first four choices for a week. So everyone shows up super excited to be in their program. And the thought behind it is that students sort themselves into these like big interest categories. So when you show up to your orientation, there'll be around a hundred other students who are all interested in the same thing as you. So it's a great community right off the bat. Like if you're in project arts, everyone there is an artist and it gives you a really easy like icebreaker question, you know, like, why did you choose to be here? And immediate friends like right off the bat. So for six days, you will go through this orientation and it's all planned by students. So it's really fun activities because it's just a student planning like essentially what they would have wanted to do for orientation. So I ran the Project Wellness group. It was partnered with the Wellness Center. We did a lot of arts and crafts. We did a walking food tour of Durham. We went to Eno State Park and we all like swam in the river and ate a bunch of snacks. We had a lot of fun for the week. And it's really adorable to see all of my little freshmen walking around campus in like groups. Like I can tell they all stayed friends. And it goes to show how these orientation groups really do create communities. And by the first day of school, that means you'll have 100 freshman friends. Like you will know 100 faces at the very least. And you likely will have made friends, right? And made these connections at Duke already before day one. You'll also have within this large group of like 100 freshmen, there are smaller orientation groups. So you'll be part of a group from like five to 10 freshmen that have the same orientation leader who is either a sophomore, junior, or senior. So you also right off the bat have this upperclassman mentor. In addition to all of the orientation leaders, there are program directors who are likely seniors who are in charge of kind of the whole program. So I like to say that before your first day of classes, you know how to get around the school because you've been there for six days. You have so many freshman friends. 
you have your upperclassmen orientation leaders and your program directors to answer any questions about the school. So you really feel like you belong and it makes Duke feel like home before you've even stepped foot in your first classroom. So I'm really passionate about the new orientation program. I wish I could have done it, um, but yeah. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing. That is perfect for students to hear about the first couple of days they spent here at Duke. <clears throat> now, I think this is a perfect time to do another round robin about favorite traditions at Duke, speaking of, because mine is our orientation week. I think it's the one of the best times on campus. So many new people, so many new experiences, but we'd love to hear, let's do Kelly, Lucy, then Kira, um, your favorite traditions that we have here at Duke. Yeah, so I, um, grew up a big basketball fan and obviously Duke has a great basketball program and it's just like so fun like yes you have to wait in line for a long time to get into the game but every time I get into the game and like it starts I'm just like it was so worth it and like also waiting is like fun too because you're you do it with a group of friends like you get a group together you're hanging out with your friends like between classes basically all day um, on like game day and it's just like there's nothing like the excitement that's in the air, like before a Duke basketball game, like even if you're not that interested in basketball, like even if, you know, you might say like, well, you know, that's not really for me. You're still going to like feel that excitement. And it's just like, it's just like a fun time on campus, like every game day. So that's always like a tradition I look forward to is like being part of that. And obviously like cheering for Duke. Um, we have like a lot of specific traditions too, like once you get into the game. Um, so for me, that's like one of the most fun things I would say and like the best tradition. Yeah, I mean, I would second that as well. Um, I just wanna say that like coming in, I was not like a, a diehard like Duke basketball fan like my whole life or anything. Like I came to Duke um, and I kind of got immersed in it and I was like, this is really fun. This is like a cool tradition that everyone's like super invested in. Um, and so now I've been there too, um, and I love Duke basketball. And even when I'm not waiting in line, I, I watch the games. Um, and I had the, the opportunity to go to the Final Four game um, last year, which was awesome. It was really fun, a great experience. Um, but another tradition that I wanted to talk about was the midnight breakfast at Marketplace um, during finals. They're so much fun. The food is so good. Um, I remember during mine, we had like chicken wings and it was so good. Like the food during midnight breakfast is just so much fun. Um, and you get to hang out with your friends and go into marketplace in the middle of the night. Um, and it's just, it's a great study break for finals. And it's also just like a nice relaxer with your friends and it brings you back down. <laughs> Yeah, so Lucy and Kelly brought up really great traditions and the fact that, and Devin's too, so the fact that I'm about to come up with different ones, I feel like should really speak to how many fun things we have going on at Duke all of the time. So I, oh, well, I wanted to mention two things. So one of them related to basketball, when we win against UNC, we burn a bench. They're like big wooden benches around Duke's campus that kind of mark like the dorms and you get to like paint it with your dorm and pick your design and so then if we win we pick a bench and we burn it and we like stand around like watching it burn it's sounding weird now that I'm explaining it but just know that it's like totally a lot of fun and very much community feel um, and then there's also the LDOC which stands for last day of classes and it's essentially like a big party for all of Duke like yay last day of classes like picture remember when you were in like elementary school and it was the most exciting thing you would get off the bus like throw your backpack across the yard like it's like that but a hundred times better there's always a huge concert I remember freaking out when I found out two friends was coming because I am the biggest like big booty mix fan like ever so two fans performing like for Duke was just absolutely incredible for me and there are also like a bunch of other activities always happening during LDOC. There's really great food, like a bunch of food trucks. And it's just everyone like stress-free on campus having the time of their lives. And I just think it's so much fun. So that's another favorite tradition of mine. Thank you all so much for sharing. And so this next question, I'll turn over to Lucy. Um, so we wanted to ask, or an individual wanted to know uh, more about student employment on campus. Do students typically hold jobs? If so, what kinds? How do you balance that between classes? Um, let's hear about your experience. 
Yeah, so I've actually held a number of different jobs on campus um, just because I wanted a couple like different experiences and just to learn different skills. Um, and so my first job that I had on campus was actually at the library. Um, and so I got to work with other students and librarians um, to you know check out books, learn about how to use the library system. Um, and I worked there for two semesters and I actually don't work there anymore, but it was actually great because I feel like I know a lot more about like how to use the library than like the typical Duke student. And so it's definitely really useful for that purpose. Um, and then it, last spring, I did research um, with the Foucault professor and that was a paid position, um, which was actually kind of like on my own time. Like he would tell me which company to research and I would do it, send it back to him. So it was kind of on my own time. So that was a really nice position to have. Um, but that one was only for the spring. So then this fall, um, I wanted to be a teaching assistant. And so um, I applied for that in the comp sci department um, for comp sci 201 because I absolutely love that course. Um, I took the class as a freshman and coming into Duke, I didn't really know that I wanted to do computer science, um, but I took comp sci 201 just kind of to see if I liked it or not. And I absolutely fell in love with it. And so I wanted to become a TA for that class because I loved it. And I also wanted to give that back to the students who were also considering being a comp sci major. Um, and so I wanted them to have that same experience that I had, um, you know, with the course. And so I, I really enjoyed that job, um, not only because I like computer science, but I also like being able to help people discover their passions for computer science as well, because I feel like sometimes people are very intimidated by computer science. And so I feel like having a good TA is something that can change that whole experience for you. Um, so that's a job that means a lot to me. And then I'm also right now a, I mentioned this earlier at the beginning, but a assistant, a student assistant at the Office of Special Events. And so that's also like a really cool like insider position um, where you get to see like all the like faculty events, um, events where, you know, they invite like all the special people to the football games and like I get to like see the guest list and like check off who's coming. Um, and so that's a lot of fun. And I learn a lot, not only just about like event planning, but you know, like um, Excel, about a lot of like admin um, type tasks that I haven't necessarily learned before. Um, and so there's definitely a lot of options for student employment um, on campus. And there's a whole job site where you can find jobs, um, whether that's work study or non work study. Um, and you can do all kinds of different things. And you also don't have to do the same thing for more than one semester. Um, I have changed jobs just because some were you know, short term, some were more long term. Um, but if, you, if you're looking for something like multiple semesters, there's definitely things for that as well. Um, and I just like the, you know, the different things, trying to learn new things. So there's definitely a lot of options and you can find something that definitely interests you. Thank you for speaking to your experiences, Lucy. So next question, we're gonna turn over to Kelly. It's two parts. One, can you tell us what the weather is like at Duke? And two, can you talk about the interaction that Duke has with Durham, um, whether that be through volunteer opportunities, that kind of stuff? Um, but yeah, thank you. Yeah, so Duke weather is kind of all over the place, I would say. Um, it's pretty hot when you get here. Um, I am from Florida, so like I'm more used to that. Um, but I think like the main thing about the weather here is just like you are going to be kind of walking everywhere so I feel like you just notice the weather here more than you might at home like um when it's cold like you're going to be thinking about it like okay I'm going to have to like walk to class and dress for this um but for the most part I would say it's like pretty temperate like right now it's um kind of between like 70s and 50s and then it's going to start getting colder um it never gets below the 20s um and um I would say most of the year it's like a comfortable enough temperature to like be comfortable outside um it rains a fair amount as well um and when it rains I feel like it rains like all day like I feel like it doesn't really just like rain randomly um so like I definitely have an umbrella or like rain boots um because I've walked around in several puddles um throughout my time here. Um, so yes, I would say it's a wide range of weather. Um, we get snow maybe like two days, three days, usually not much more than that um, in the whole school year. Um, so it doesn't get like insanely cold or anything. Um, but yes, like I said, definitely a wide range. Um, 
And then in terms of Duke crossing over with Durham, um, I know that there are certain classes um, known as like service learning classes um, where you take the class, but it's also there's like a community service component to that. Um, and that community service is in the Durham community. Um, so for example, there's like Spanish service learning classes um, and they go and do community service with like Spanish speaking members of the Durham community. Um, and then other than that, I know they're also are a few different clubs and things like focused on community service. And I do get, I think like a monthly email about community service opportunities in Durham. Um, so I think that that's one thing that Duke is like trying to be um, more conscious of is like, how can we help out our community? Um, and also a lot of the eateries here and like the food trucks and stuff are like local Durham businesses. Um, so Duke also supports the Durham community through like that food scene um, and does like encourage students to kind of like go out there and like be in the Durham community. Um, and so, yeah, I would say those are some of like the main ways that Duke as a school does try to incorporate Durham as a community. Thank you, Kelly. And We'll turn over this last question to Kira before we talk about our Why Duke stories. Kira, could you tell us a little bit about study abroad? Because I know you did, you had an opportunity to go abroad um, during your time here. Yeah, sure. So we've talked about advisors earlier in the session. So I also want to mention that there are study abroad advisors who are super helpful to help you like plan out when you want to go abroad and classes and credits that you get abroad, all of those logistical things they are super helpful with. So there are two main like buckets of ways that you can study abroad. That's a Duke in program or a Duke approved program. So starting with Duke in programs, that's exactly what it sounds like. It's Duke just in a different place. So a really popular one is Duke in Madrid. I had a lot of friends who did that and absolutely loved it. So you're in classes taught by Duke professors and you're with other Duke students. So in that sense, like your GPA will transfer, your credits will transfer just as if you were in Durham, North Carolina on Duke's campus. And they have those in like many different countries and you can go a lot of places in one of these Duke in programs. The second option is Duke approved. So that just means that it might not be Duke professors and only Duke students, but Duke has sent students there before your credits will transfer. Like if you need one more English credit to graduate, you can take your English class abroad and it will totally count towards your graduation requirements. Just your GPA won't transfer, which means you're essentially taking it pass fail. So I've never really heard a student complain about that. Um, I did a Duke approved program in Copenhagen, Denmark. So I was taught by Danish professors and I was in class with all American study abroad programs that was specific to my program. Some of these you do join just like another college abroad. Um, but I was with other American study abroad students, but from universities all over. So they weren't all Duke students. I absolutely loved studying abroad. First, I got a lot of credits like it was not a challenge for me credit wise to go abroad. I actually got even more credits by going abroad for a semester than I would have on Duke's campus. So don't worry about that. Um, and it was so much fun, like a really great experience for me to be able to travel. I felt like I did so much learning like outside of the classroom about myself and about the world and like what I wanted in life. It sounds really cheesy now that I'm expressing all of these things, but it truly is like such a character development moment. And I recommend it for absolutely everyone. And it is possible for everyone. Like if you know that that's something you want to do, start planning it early. Like you can meet with a study abroad advisor, like freshman year. Like that's totally fine. Um, over 50% of our students study abroad. That includes like engineers, pre-med. So it's totally possible for everyone. And I would recommend it for everyone. Great. And let's do a quick um, <clears throat> round robin here for our Why Duke stories. Let's go Kelly, Lucy, then Kira, and we'll wrap it up for this evening. Yeah. So Duke was really on my radar, mostly because like I wanted a school with like the academic prestige, but I also wanted that collaborative environment and not necessarily a place where I felt like school was like the only thing that I should be doing or need to be doing. Um, 
And so I just kind of had the feeling that Duke offered just like so many activities across the board, like whether it's academic and research or um, sports oriented or arts oriented. And just like, it felt like there was a place for everyone at Duke. And it didn't seem like, you know, if you fit this box, you should go to Duke. It's kind of like, if you go to Duke, no matter who you are, you'll find your place and you'll be happy. Um, and also just like the vibe that I got from the people at Duke, like from like what I could gauge basically, it was just like, these people just all seem very friendly. And like, it just seems like a place that attracts collaborative people and kind people um, and people who are just passionate about what they do, which I think is like, it's great and like very motivating to be around people like that. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, so I never really had like a specific school that I necessarily really wanted to go to. Um, and so I, I visited Duke and this sounds stupid, but like I just kind of knew that it was a place for me when I visited. Um, I, you know, I think what really stood out to me about Duke was specifically, I was so excited to like get involved when I came to the info session and I was sitting on campus, I was just like, oh my God, like I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. And it just like, it just made so much sense for me. Um, and, you know, again, like what Kelly said, the people, I think that the people really make the place and Duke does a really good job of picking amazing people that um, are passionate about like, very different things. And so you have so many people that are come together and they work very well together. Um, and they're passionate not just about school, but so many other things as well, um, things you wouldn't necessarily think of before. And so I think it's just a really cool place. Um, and yeah, that's why I chose it. Yeah, so Kelly and Lucy have already said half of my why Duke because the people and yeah, everything was just so on point with what they said. I also knew coming into college, I didn't know a lot. Like I had no clue where I wanted to go, like geographically, how big of a school I wanted. And so Duke was a really great happy medium for me in all of those regards, like especially the size. It's this perfect medium size where if you want it to feel like a big school at times, you can do that and it'll feel super huge and like you'll never meet anyone and do all the things. But it also has small school aspects where kind of anytime you're walking around campus or you walk into a space, like you're likely going to know someone there, even if it's like a friend of a friend. And there are all these little communities and little spaces built into the school. So really whatever you're looking for that way can be accomplished on this campus. I also knew that I wanted to be pre-med and I knew that I did not want to be in a competitive and cutthroat space. So Duke's collaborative nature was really attractive to me. And I loved the thought of like going to class and making friends in class and doing homework with friends. That all sounded really awesome to me. And it is awesome. Like it is true. And the other thing I would like to say is that Duke has so many opportunities that the opportunities outnumber the people. So things are not overly competitive when they don't have to be. And everyone has so many different avenues to explore that it leads to a lot of personal growth. Like now that I'm a really nostalgic senior, I can look back on all of my friends from freshman year and myself from freshman year. And we've all changed so much, but in really awesome ways in terms of like, the things I'm really passionate about now, I didn't even know existed in high school. Like I did not know that they were a thing before I came to Duke and Duke gave me so much space to grow and showed me so many things that I was never exposed to before. And it just creates this environment that people grow and flourish in. And I don't think I would be the same person if I went to any other school. So I'm eternally grateful that I chose, chose to come to Duke for sure. Thank you all so much to our amazing panelists. And we wanna thank you all for spending the time with us this evening. I'll draw your attention really quickly to some really cool events that are coming, on, coming up in October from our admissions office. On the 19th, for example, we have a Pratt School of Engineering open house. This was a Jewish Life at Duke event. On the 20th, our Duke, Duke Student Black community will be having a Black, black, <laughs> black Blue Devil student chat. Um, there'll be another one of these style, style student chats on the 24th a Duke community panel on the 29th, and um, an identity community student chat on the 30th. 
And with that all being said, thank you all again for attending. Please take care and we wish you all the very best of luck in your college application process. We know that it's stressful. Um, remember to find the beauty in it all. I know it's hard. I know it's easy to say now, hard to see then, but it is a very special time. And we thank you again for joining us this evening. Take care, have the best night. And we'll see you around. Bye everyone.